This is Israeli Technology Founders Speak, a podcast of conversations with successful Israeli high-tech and biotech entrepreneurs, with your host, Avraham Hermon. Zev Dvashi is the CEO and co-founder of Plas Free an Israeli biotech startup that specializes in the development and commercialization of vital fluid absorbent devices for blood purification. A veteran of the Israeli biotech startup scene, Dr. Dvashi has been involved in several startups and holds a PhD from Tel Aviv University in cell research and immunology. Avram sat down with Zev in the offices of Plasfree in Petach Tikva, where they discussed how to take an idea and develop it into a marketable product, raising money, building a team, the role of patents in their business, tips for startup founders, and much more. This podcast is a creation of J.M.B. Davis Ben David, an intellectual property law firm serving clients around the world. You have great innovations. We keep them safe. It's not enough to just have a great startup idea or innovation. If you don't legally protect your innovations, products, and brand, anyone can claim them as their own. We keep your great innovation secure. Learn more by going to jmbdavis.com. That's jmbdavis.com. So thank you, Zev. It's great to be here in your offices in Petar Tikva. What problem does Plasfree solve? So Plasfree is trying to give a better care for patients in emergency situations. The problem is that when we are dealing patients with emergency situations, uh, usually we will treat them with medication. As, as you know, any medication that you will administer it has its side effects. For example, if you take uh, paracetamol, it has effect on the liver, right? Right. So what we are doing here in Plasfree, we're trying to treat those patients with a medical device that will specifically address those indications without any medication. Our main indication, for example, that we are trying to address it with the first product is massive blood loss. Massive blood loss is a common problem. I think everybody knows somebody that suffers from massive blood loss. It can be from, for example, giving birth that was complicated, like mm-hmm. postpartum hemorrhage or bypass surgery that was complicated, even injury that can be also reason for uh, bleeding. So there is a lot of reasons for why you bleed, but very few good and efficient treatments. Maybe if you can explain a little bit about how the device works. Yeah, so the device, uh, it's a filtration system for plasma units. What we are doing, we are taking the plasma unit that are coming from a donor patient, and instead of giving it, giving it directly to the bleeding patient, we are removing from the plasma two specific proteins that are responsible for the breakdown of the clots. It means the dissolvement of the clots. Once we are extracting those proteins, we are generating plasma that is more favorable for coagulation, helping the patient to be stabilizing its clots faster, and by doing so, to reduce the bleeding. Mm -hmm. So it's a filtration system called clear plasma, meaning cleaning the plasma from unnecessary proteins during bleeding. So the the proteins are unnecessary for the the patient that the plasma is being administered to, right? Exactly. But uh, in general, in healthy plasma, these are proteins that are necessary. Yes. Plasminogen, for example, is one of the proteins that we are removing. Uh, He's responsible for breaking clots, but his mainly efficiency and his main use is when we are in rest condition. For example, we want to avoid any thromboembolic event that can come from our legs or arms Mm -hmm. to the brain or to the heart, right? And you need those clots to be dissolved. But in the event of bleeding... This protein only interrupts with the coagulation system, okay? Changing the balance to again, to re-bleeding again and again and again. And Mm -hmm. this is what we'd like to avoid. So if you can explain a bit about what stage you are with this product. So we started in 2017 with the idea that comes from Professor Abed Hijazi, that is one of the leading um, physicians in Israel regarding to blood chemistry. And from that point, uh, we established Plus Free together and... uh, we thought what is the best solution that can absorb those proteins fast with not affecting the transfusion time. This is a critical point. And generating plasma that is almost free from plasminogen. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we developed some prototypes. And after a year, we started animal trials in 2018. 
that began in small animals like mice, and after that in big animals like pigs. After proof of concept, we started to do a clinical study, a pilot st- clinical study here in Israel and also in Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the clinical study was on seven patients. It's an open label phase. That means that the physician and the patient knew what they are receiving. And that was, of course, with the supervision of the Israeli Ministry of Health and the Italian Ministry of Health. And what we demonstrated is, first of all, that the, the device is safe. That's the most critical point, you know, to be safe and not to make any harm. But on top of that, we demonstrate some indication of that. We reduce the time of bleeding, like we demonstrated in pigs. We reduce the needs in another coagulation enhancer, like platelets, for example. And we would, because the bleeding was stopped faster, we can discharge those patients faster. That means hospitalization day was uh, reduced. In these days, we are finalizing um, additional study on patients presenting upper gastrointestinal bleeding. In Israel, in Italy, in Czech Republic, in more than 50 patients, a double-blind randomized control study that is very um, good, that neither the physician, neither the patient, and neither the company knew what uh, the patient received. And I can tell you that the results are very interesting. So the patient either receives regular plasma or plasma that has been treated with your device. Exactly. So the, the plasma that is being given commonly worldwide, for example, the number in the U.S. is 3 million units. In Europe, it's 2.8 million units. Wow. In Israel, it's 100,000 units almost. It's, it's the first line of defense in massive blood loss. But if you are doing the filtration on the bedside of the patient, like we've done, you can get a better plasma, much safer, of course. And eventually, the clinical outcome we demonstrated in the studies is, of course, safety, that there is no problem. But we also showed that all laboratory parameters are improving because the coagulation is working better with no interruption, with no any protein that inhibits. Mm -hmm. And mortality, for example, we didn't have any mortality death in comparison to the control group that had. Mm -hmm. So eventually we can save life, literally. That's impressive. So can you tell me how the idea was born and how you became involved with this idea? Yeah, so Abed Hijazi is the inventor of our first product. He's a physician, blood chemistry expert in blood chemistry from Barcelona University. And he saw the need to give a better treatment to bleeding patients without side effects because almost every drug that you have has its own side effects. You probably remember our Prime Minister Sharon that had um, a brain hemorrhage, right? Yeah. And eventually the drugs that were treating him caused him to stroke, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's a common thing that bleeding is very common, more than we think, but there are very still very low effective treatment that has very minor side effects. Most of, the, most of them has a lot of side effects. So the idea, as I mentioned, started from Abed, and together with him, we built a system that today called Clear Plasma that work efficiently and properly, removing more than 95% of the plasminogen from the ammonia donor mm-hmm. and uh, generating plasma that is more better and safer for the patient. Maybe you could address how you became involved in it personally. Yeah, personally, I was uh, getting involved by um, Zoa Gendler. Zoa Gendler is the CEO of NGTVC. NGTVC is a venture capital located in the north of Israel. It's a Jewish Arab VC located in Nazareth. And um, I was... Uh, called by Zoa to uh, meet Abed, and together we decided that it's a very good idea that can has commercial aspects, and then we established uh, Plus Free. That's uh, mm-hmm. the make a long story short. I'll switching gears a little bit, what role does intellectual property, and in particular patents, have in your business strategy? Oh, that's one of the most important things in, uh, in company, and, and from three aspects. First of all, Intellectual property is one of the barriers that you can prevent from competitors to do similar things that you are doing. And this is the reason that we are submitting almost in every place in the world, including China, Japan, the UE market, USA, Canada, Israel, of course, a request for um, IP. Mm. This is a barrier that is very important. Second, the way that we looked on patents is like an umbrella that we need to have several patents that will protect us in several manners on the core technology. Because it's not only one patent that can protect you, you need some layers of patents that every time you do a development and you do some progression, you need another layer and another layer. So that's the second point. Mm -hmm. Third, eventually, 
when they're going to be hopefully you know an exit or merger the the company that will acquire plus we would like to know what she's acquiring what ip she has and if the ip will will not be sufficient i think that will be a problem to get an acquisition so mm-hmm. on the point of view of investors on the point of view of company strategy like commercialization which country to register and of course to protect your intellectual property you you need to have a very good patent in terms of uh the idea originating in a uh hospital can you address a little bit the the issues surrounding uh striking a deal te- technology transfer TTO yeah um and how that how that worked for you and how that works in Israel in general yeah so as you know every inventor that develops something during the um during his work in a hospital all the intellectual property belongs to the hospital that's the main idea the hospital can give you some royalties or percentage in the royalties but eventually it belongs to the hospital uh now for us exactly uh for plus we we knew that abed is uh, one of the employees in adasa so we need to know negotiate it with uh, hadasit mm-hmm. about, the tech transfer arm of hadasa yeah, exactly about the rights and the, who owns the patent And once we we got an agreement with them uh we can establish the company so it's a critical point to make sure what are your rights as employee by the way I can say that and if you have if you have a contract with the TTO office that's much better to protect your ideas mm-hmm. so that's important input for yeah. inventors who are in a hospital setting yeah because let me just add one thing because as a company as a CEO of the company My main goal is to protect the IP of the company that means that all patents are assigned to the company and belong to the company so it's a it's a fundamental um criteria for investment from any other mm-hmm. investment so you must have it right so uh some of the IP I understand is uh, is licensed is under license from the university ah uh, no 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 we we are not licensing we we agree about the waiver from Adasa okay and the waiver um protecting their rights under Abid's rights I see okay so all the All of the patents have been filed in the name of your company. Exactly. Okay. So you're in the process of bringing a product to market and you have some successes in the clinic. Can you describe some of the difficulties you've had in the, during this process of bringing a product to a market? There are three main challenges. First of all is the regulation. Regulation is a huge market barrier for every medical or drug that we are developing because regulation puts standards and you need to face those standards and you need to cope the criteria, of course. and that's a major problem second is the ip and again i i i get back to that because you don't need only a good uh, intellectual property you need all to make sure that you have freedom to operate mm-hmm. because you can develop something that maybe is a uh, novel or you can get some patent but eventually you're stepping on somebody else's toes and you don't have any freedom to operate mm-hmm. on that area so that can be a major problem Third point is how to convince the physicians the medical community that they will need that because there are a lot of substances and a lot of devices and every every day there is a new technology emerging you need to convince them how to use that and this is the top notch technology so once you succeeded plundering the world and you have freedom to operate and you have embraced by the clinicians and you get money of course that's the 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 road for commercialization but still it's a long way mm-hmm. so since you mentioned money so can you explain a little bit about your pathway to funding how you got funding and how you proceeded with that yeah so the company was uh, founded in 2017 and we got support from the NGTVC as i mentioned and also from the Israeli Innovation Authority following a year later we uh, raised some funding from Israeli Angels family office that support us and after that we will start looking for strategic investor mm-hmm. our concept is that strategic investor look differently from vcs on the investment because it it can invest in earlier stages and not so uh, near to commercialization and we succeeded to bring one one of them one of the biggest companies in the world named asai kasai medical that invest in the company and they um are specialized in blood purification that means that they're really in the focus of the company and we are in their focus once you have that i think it's much easier to bring other financial investors that was our strategy for commercial initial for for investment and i think we succeeded so far can you tell me more about asai yeah so asai is a very big company from japan more than 40 40000 employees 
main focus in Japan, mid、um, Southeast Asia, and also Europe. Only recently, in the last few years, they've developed、um, sites in USA, like in Boston. But their focus is in、uh, the, the the department that、uh, deal with blood purification is dealing with a pharesis machine, the alizis machine,、uh, plasma filtration,、mm-hmm. etc. So they are really、uh, in in plus three focus, and we are in their focus. We met them in a convention in the U.S. in Philadelphia. So that's our first、uh, meeting face to face. We have previous introduction by emails and by letters, but eventually.、Um, They are familiar more than their ability to you know, commercialize filtration systems and etc. Switching gears a little bit, can you tell me what is unique about a startup originating in Israel and even within Israeli startups? Your startup is a bit unique because it involves collaboration between the Arab sector and in Israel. How did how did that work? And if you can provide insight about innovation in the Arab sector. So in general, startup in Israel it's very tight. Timeline that the owners and the board would like to see you reaching for first in man or proof of concept. That means that、uh, you need to work very fast. You need to work in very low budget, very stressful conditions. And I think that's for all startups in Israel because、uh, it's the nature of Israeli startup that we want to make、uh, rough and dirty. That's the term. We want to reach as much as you can to human trial. Special with the Arab、uh, Israeli and Jewish、um, collaboration, I think it's fantastic because there there is a lot of know-how in the Arab sector that、uh, not all the time is come to being expressed. And I think working with,、uh, for example, with Abed and、uh, also our chief operation, she is also a Muslim, and we have a Christian also, our Mus, our Christian. So I think it's it's really great that a lot of cultures are coming. And、uh, merging together to work harmony together, and I think it's it's fruitful for everyone. The only pitfall is that there is a lot of holidays that you need to know there as a CEO. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have three remember- calendars on your desk, <laughs> <Yeah> . and <laughs> you need to remember the holiday of the Christian and the Muslim and the Jewish. So every week or two, you have some holidays. So that's the only pitfall. But other than that, it's wonderful. It's good to know that there is.、Uh- Innovation in the minority sectors here in Israel as well, and that should be、uh, evaluated as well. And there should be more more collaborations like.、This. I think that Arab、uh, minority in Israel is one of the engine of growth for the Israeli economy because they are not、uh, their potential is not fully not fully come to expressed. So there is a lot of good ideas come from the Muslim and the Christian minority, and I think in the years coming we will see them more and more. Strength that is emerging and becoming more meaningful. Okay, you told me a little bit about your first generation product, which is most advanced.、Yeah. But from that, I understand that there are other products potentially in the pipeline. Can you talk about that and perhaps your vision for Plasfree? Yeah. So down the road, when we get a lot of data and know how about plasma filtration, and during the clinical study, we saw that there is additional need. To treat patient with internal bleeding that cause because liver dysfunctional. One of the main problem is that there is a accumulation of ammonia that is a neurotoxin that can reach your brain and cause some illnesses like、um, behavior changes, coma, and sometimes also death. Today there are very limited solution for that, and we developed another filtration system that can remove ammonia toxin from your bloodstream. And by doing so, we can reduce the accumulation of ammonia in your brain, prevent any neurological damage,、uh, reducing time of hospitalization and rehabilitation. This product is under preclinical studies in animals and showing tremendous results. Very good data is being accumulated, and eventually, I believe that by the end of this year, we will start clinical study in human trial. Regarding Plus Three, I really believe that Plus Three can be an innovation center for blood purification. I think that the knowledge that we gain. On the last five years that we are operating, can be、um, used to develop new products and maybe to develop some innovation center for additional indication that there is unmet need over there and still need to bring new solutions. And this is my vision. I think that if we were having more investments, having more、um, time and manpower, we can bring new solutions for those indication. Oh, sounds amazing. Can you address a little bit how this、um, second generation ammonia filtration product works? So it works a little bit differently from the first line of product, from that is filtrating、uh, the plasminogen from the plasma donor. 
it's differently because what he's doing is um, he's working like dialysis. That means that they are mm-hmm. connecting you for machine that uh, absorb from you the blood, doing some filtration system and returning the blood to you. Down this process, we are connecting our filtration kit, the mm-hmm. ammonia absorber column, that is absorbing only the ammonia from the plasma that goes in your bloodstream. By doing so, we are returning to your um, body plasma that is clean from ammonia. Uh, this is instead of uh, pharma, pharma that is being given by drugs or other uh, IV injections that's supposed to trap the ammonia in your blood. But that takes time. And time you don't have if you have hyperammonia because your brain can be injured. Mm-hmm. So this process takes 20 to 30 minutes only. And that, that's the main idea, the time, how we reduce the time. And eventually it's worked very good because you can take the blood of the patient, do the filtration system, and return it safely to the patient without the ammonia. So that's the genius here. And again, it's a collaboration between Abed and I that I bring this product for the market. Okay, sounds promising. And then you have a potential large market for that sort of indication. I agree. Lastly, what tips do you have for founders? People that have new ideas that want to start companies. What tips do you have? You have experience with five for five years in class free and yeah. many other years in, in other startups. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have a uh, few insights from... 10 years of entrepreneur. First of all, all of us has good ideas. I, I'm sure of that. But not all good ideas has commercial vision. You need to make sure that your idea has commercial ability to be commercialized. Otherwise, it's a problem. Second, do a patent search. Very big and complete patent search because you never know where it's going to come to you. I saw a lot of friends of mine really, that develop very unique things and develop prototypes. But after a year when the PCT was published, they got, boom, a list of publications that exactly doing similar or exactly things that they developed. And that can be, you know, devastating for others. And last point, if you have a good idea, there is a commercial vision. And, and, and of course, market uh, is going to embrace it and you have a good idea, a good IP and freedom to operate, don't give up your idea. Even though it's hard to get money, it's very hard to get money, knock on every door, ask every one of your friends, neighbor, family, if you know some investors, meet all of them. It's only in numbers. Eventually, it's the when you meet so many people, one or two will invest and you get the money that you can do to reach your proof of concept. And after that, if it's work, you're probably much easier to proceed. Great, Zev. Thank you very much for spending the time. I learned a lot. I'm sure our listeners also learned. So thank you and uh, wishing you a lot of success for Plas Free. Hope to hear good things, continue good things from your results from your studies and from your development. Thank you very much. My pleasure. That was Zev Dvashi the CEO and co-founder of ClassFree. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There are many more to come. Do you have a great innovation or startup idea? We'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us by going to our website, jmbdavis.com. And if you go to jmbdavis.com forward slash startup, you'll see we have a special site specifically made for startups to help startups protect their innovations. Please be in touch with us and find out how we can help you. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to bringing you the next episode.